Hey, Wizard Nation. Nation. I'm Claudia Ann. And I'm Devin. And you're watching BGTV. BGTV. Don't forget to buy Rad for the yearbook. You can order it on yearbookordercenter.com with the school code 13419. Remember, space is limited, and if you have any questions, see Mrs. Schultz or Mrs. Bach. A representative from SUNY Canton will be visiting on March 20th at 8 a.m. Please sign up ahead of time on Naviance, and then get a pink pre-signed pass from the guidance office. Physicals will be available every Friday for all sophomores and athletes who need to get working papers. Come in and see you when your physical expires. And if you need a physical, sign up in the health office. First come, first served. Attention all seniors, as you already may know, the all-night party will be at the castle this year. The cost is $100. Please submit your $25 deposit to the main office to reserve your spot. Next training meeting for Ida Side is scheduled for Tuesday, March 6th at dismissal in the auditorium. Permission slips will be distributed for our upcoming visits. See Mr. Saladino with questions. Attention all Academic World Quest competitors. The competition will be held tomorrow. The last practice is today after school. Make sure you have turned in permission slips to Mrs. Van. The Mask and Mouth Society will present Thoroughly Modern Millie, March 1st through 3rd at 7 p.m. Tickets are available for Mrs. Davis. Special opening night ticket price is $7. Get one while they last. All Regents Review classes will be offered through May. Sign up in the counter in the main office. Let's see how our Wizards are supporting gallbladder cancer awareness. Here's Megan Fico with the coverage. Hey Wizards, I'm Megan from BGTV and today is the Green Out for Gallbladder Cancer. Let's check it out. So I'm here with... Noah Cunningham. So Noah, why are you wearing green today? Uh, the month of February is a gallbladder awareness month, so that's why. So I'm here with Katerina Whalen. So why was green the color that was chosen to do for today? Um, green is just the color that represents gallbladder cancer and this is the month for gallbladder cancer as well as liver cancer and lymphoma so we picked that color for the um, green out today. Okay and was there any like specific reason that you guys chose today to be the day for everyone to wear green or was it just like random? Well February is the month um, for gallbladder cancer and it was just a random day in February that we decided to pick for to green out. Thank you. And that wraps it up for me. I'm Megan Fico signing off. Back to you in the studio. Here is Aaron Wilson with your weekly sports update. Hey Wizards, I'm Aaron here with your weekly sports update. As most seasons are winding down, some spring teams are preparing for the upcoming season. The girls' softball teams have been training all throughout the year getting ready. Let's check it out. So I'm here with... Gabby Gellies and Catherine Doyle. So what have you been doing in the off season to prepare? I've just been keeping my mentality up from last season and I've also been having some practices with my travel team and yeah. And Catherine, what is the biggest challenge you're trying to overcome from last season? I'm staying mentally tough and not letting one mistake ruin the whole game. Now you are a shortstop. What does a shortstop need to be successful on the field? A uh, shortstop needs determination stamina and endurance lots of endurance <laughs> and you're a first baseman what does the first baseman need to be successful um catch the ball and um know where to cover during plays and where to go during bunts and all those situationals all right thank you so i'm here with Allie Beck and Alexa Nybold. So Allie, what would you say the hardest pitch is for a hitter to hit? 
It depends on the hitter. Everyone has their preferences. I personally, for me, the hardest pitch is the inside pitch to get your bat around on it. Some people it's outside, some people it's low, but the pitcher just has to be able to read the batter. And Alexa, what would you say the biggest difference between softball and baseball is? Um, I would say the biggest difference is like the speed of the game and having to adjust to the size of the field and the size of the ball and just having to move quicker and be like more on your feet. So both of you guys are seniors. What are you guys looking forward to the most in your last season? Well, we've come a long way as a program and I'm looking forward to the possibility of making sections and it's definitely going to happen. We got a new schedule, we have everything in place, we improved a lot, teams are already starting to look at us with a little fear. So I'm excited to win and actually win. I'm also excited to making the memories along the way with friends as we win. And it's going to be a lot of fun, it's going to be something I'll treasure as I go through college. And what about you? Um, I'm really excited to just step back onto the field with all my favorite girls and make more memories. Obviously, it's our last season together, so it's really, it's really sad because we're all going to play competitively for one last time together. So it's just going to be really emotional, but I'm really excited because, like Ali said, we're going to go into sections this year. We're going to make more memories and hopefully school records. All right. Thank you. Let's take a look at what's going on this week. Congrats to the members of the track and field team who qualified for the state championships in Staten Island, which will be held on Saturday. Congrats to 8th grader Jackson Vinrobe for competing at the States for swimming and diving on Thursday. Stay tuned in the basketball playoffs as the girls beat Monroe and had a game on Thursday against Warwick. Make sure to go out and support your fellow Wizards. Now, here's Tucker Sergo with the CYO Basketball League. That's all I have for you this week. You stay classy, Wizards. Hey Wizards, this is Tucker Sorgo, and I'm reporting on the boys' third grade CYO Basketball League. Let's go take a look. I got the magic in me. Every time I touch that track, it turns into gold. Everybody knows I got the magic. So I'm here with Luke, Michael, Sam, CJ, Bryce. Now, guys, you guys are the Knicks, right? The Knicks? Okay. So, why do you guys love coming to rec basketball every week? Um, I like to dribble. I see the faces on the other losers. <laughs> so, you, you, you're saying you win? Yes. I like that attitude. Sam, what about you? Because I'm good at it. CJ, how about you? Because we win every game. Yeah. And Bryce, how about you? Because I'm good at shooting three-pointers. Alright, well, I don't think there's any three-pointers in this league, but I am the coach, and all these guys I love very much, and yeah, we're going to get a couple more wins today, right? Alright. So I'm here with Jack Farley. Now, Jack, uh, I know you've been coaching for a while. What, um, what like makes you do this every week? Why do you love it so much? I just love basketball. You know, I love teaching the younger kids like how to play and stuff. It's just a lot of fun. Yeah, being a coach myself, I mean, I love coaching the new, the next generation, and I think it's a lot of fun. Um, how long have you been doing this for? I've been doing this for three years. I coach my little brother. All right, that's cool. Well, thank you for your time. Time for a switch up. Let's see who's in the spotlight this week on Bios with Benson. Hi, I'm Matt from BGTV here on Bios with Benson. This week I decided to get a bio from a few teachers. I'm here with Daniela Tenero. Since you're a teacher here now, I wanted to know what made you decide to come back and teach here rather than any other other school? Well, my first job was teaching college composition when I was getting my master's at New Pulse, and I really loved working with older students. But my first public school job was in Monhagen Middle School in the Middletown School District. And I liked working with middle schoolers, but when I heard that there was an opportunity to teach at 
the high school in Washingtonville. I absolutely jumped at it. I had such a great time at Washingtonville when I was a student and I student taught there. I did both my placements here. So having the opportunity to come back was something I just couldn't turn down. And ever since you graduated in 2009, how would you say the atmosphere and style of Washington has changed? I would say that we've become more inclusive as a student body. It's really great to see how much the community of the school works together, um, whether it's at homecoming or doing any of your class of 2018 dances or any kind of fundraiser that you guys do. You really see Washingtonville come together as a community to support whatever you have as a goal. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. I'm here with Mr. Bruschino. So Mr. Bruschino, what would you say was your favorite memory at Washingtonville? Uh, when I was a student? Yes. Uh, one favorite memory. Uh, you know, I played baseball here, so that whole season was a favorite memory, but um, my coaches were Mr. Connolly and Mr. LaPere, and uh, if you asked them about how it ended, that would not be a favorite memory, but up until then, that would be my favorite memory, playing, playing ball here. All right. And now, there's been a lot of talk about your senior picture and the quote underneath it. I was just wondering why you chose that exact quote. You know, when you're young and you are given a certain amount of characters and you haven't learned that senior quotes last long and that you're going to come back and teach at the school that you put the senior quote in, uh, you probably would have rethought it. But young me thought that that was a great idea. So that was how I expressed my, my time at Washington. Thank you for asking that question. All right, and now if you could change it today, what would you, what it would be? If I could change the whole quote? Yeah. Uh, it would probably be something profound that I don't have in me right now, but I would have thought of something very profound. Like insert profound quote here. Uh, Thanks for having me, Washington Mill. You know, something like that. All right, sounds good. Thank you for your time, Mr. Virginia. I'm here with? Um, Mr. White. Now, Mr. White, when you graduated, did you ever think you'd come back to Washingtonville? Uh, no, not right away. Um, I mean, it's a great place to live. I didn't know what I wanted to do. Went to college, changed my major a bunch of times, um, and then decided to become a teacher. Mm -hmm. And now, Mr. White, what's your favorite part of coming back to Washingtonville? Uh, favorite part of coming back to Washingtonville is the sense of community um, and being very proud from this is where I graduated, this is where I went to school, I grew up and to be able to come back and um, you know have hopefully have my children come through here um, just creates a nice uh, sense of it. My parents both went to Washingtonville so it's you know being a Washingtonville family you know once a wizard always a wizard um, and yeah that's what. All right thank you for your time. Thank you. That's all I have for this week now here's a quick commercial break. The Mask and Mime Society will present Thoroughly Modern Millie. If you couldn't make it opening night, you still have two chances to see this fantastic show on March 2nd and 3rd at 7 p.m. Tickets are available from Mrs. Davis in the guidance office, and they will be sold at the door. They are $8 for students and seniors and $9 for adults. Be sure to see it before the curtain closes. Ever wonder what's going on around the halls of WHS? Here's Fitz on the fly. Fitz a bird! Fitz a plane! Nah, it's just Fitz on the fly. <laughs> So I'm here at Round Hill Elementary with Mrs. Madarano's class. Now let's see who's smarter than the fifth grader. Okay, so if you get both questions wrong, then you have to say you are not smarter than the fifth grader. Let's get flying. Is the sun a star or a planet? I believe the sun is a star. It is not a planet. That is correct. What type of skin does a glass frog have? Frog skin? The answer is translurent skin. <laughs> Fill in the blank. We just celebrated Chinese New Year. 2018 is the year of the what? Dog. That's correct. Good job. What is the capital of Manitoba, Canada? I don't know, Ottawa? That's no, Winnipeg. Good job, though. How far is China from the USA? 40 million miles? 7,233. 
<laughs> How many chemicals are in a cigarette? A million? 7,000 chemicals. <laughs> what part of the cell is like the stomach and stores water? I have no idea. It's the vacuole. What is the powerhouse of the cell? The nucleus? It's actually the mitochondria. When was the first Winter Games? Germany. Oh. No, wait, 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 Greece. Greece. It was 1924 in France. When was curling added to the Winter's Game? 1982. 1924. Pretty close. What is the author of Frindle? Dr. Seuss. <laughs> Andrew Clemens. True or false, can tarantulas grow their legs back? False. That's actually true. The first Jamaican bobsled team was it was in which year? I don't know. I, have no idea. I don't think there was a Jamaican bobsled team. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is 1988. <laughs> okay, no good for me then. All right. How many athletes were in the 1924 Winter Olympic Games? Uh, 1,200. 258. All right, come back. Come back, you gotta say it. I'm not smarter than a fifth grader. All right, Michaela, you gotta say you're not smarter than a fifth grader. I'm really not smarter than a fifth grader. All right, you gotta say it. I'm not smarter than a fifth grader. Hi, right, DJ. You gotta say you're not smarter than a fifth grader. I am not smarter than a fifth grader. <laughs> I am not smarter than a fifth grader. Sorry. That's all my wings can handle this week. Back to the studio. That's all we have for this week, Wizards. Don't forget to check out our hashtag Wizard Nation podcast. And the Wizard Weekly. We'll see you next week on BGTV. BGTV.